Hi everyone, thanks for watching Access Hockey MI. We have been gone. We missed you. For a long time. Sorry. Rachel bought a new house. Yes, Congratulations, I did. Thank Rachel. You. Thank you. So we've been renovating and moving in and very busy <coughs> and not even having internet, being off the grid. It's Our been agent great. was so confused. It's been great, but it's also been a little odd just because now hockey's back and we miss so much in our time away. Mm -hmm. So this video is going to be talking about all the stuff that we missed. Very briefly, some things. We're mostly going to talk about the Griffins being at camp today, mm -hmm. um, which is Sunday. So later than when it's arrived. <laughs> but yeah, they were at camp earlier this week. Um, and we went and we were able to see them play and be at the Van Andel Arena, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to recap some stuff we've missed from being gone. And then we're going to mostly talk about the Griffins camp. So let's go. So first things first, we're a little late to it, but congratulations, Team USA. Yay! I'm going to World Juniors. Team um, USA. It was super exciting. I didn't see was, it coming. Yeah. I, Honestly, I thought Canada was going to Team USA. Like it's crazy. So that's really cool. It's insane. a lot of guys that we've watched for a while. Trevor Zegras just tore it up, 7 goals, 11 assists. He was so. a very big not surprise, but it was just a huge It was cool to see him. A huge so thing well. for the United States, yeah. I think. And I and everyone was freaking right out about Canada. It. So. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Two baddies with the goals. Uh San Diego mm -hmm. right now, the AHL oh, of wow. the Anaheim Ducks. Yeah. So yeah, that's a little sad, but right. <laughs> you'll that's see okay. his name a lot. So yeah, congratulations, USA. <laughs> it was right, right around that time that I bought my house, so we kind of fell <laughs> off the grid at that point. Yeah, um, that. We actually also this week were able to get back into arenas again, and the first one we went to was the Mercy Health Arena for the Lumberjacks, which was fantastic. They actually, the USHL started their season several weeks ago. They've played 20-plus um, games already. Yeah. The game we were at, I believe, was like their 24th. Yeah. Something they along started them. a lot on the road, too, yeah. and just with everything going on, we just hadn't made it. So mm -hmm. this last weekend was the first time we'd been back in almost a year. Um, so okay. it felt really, really good to see the it team again. It was great to be back. Um, some things that we want to note, we want to note some things about their development so we were able to see them play the Chicago Steel which is usually a team that thwarts us and everything that we want yeah. all the time ever because they're a very talented team very good organization they always have fantastic players we got someone uh, Master Simone played mm -hmm. who is someone that the Red Wings drafted um, he played with the Chicago Steel you'll know um, Gunnar Wolf Fontaine was yep. a guy who played with Nick the Steel Abruzzi Nick was also drafted. they have so many good players with them that move on to doing great things that they always thwart us and we're always like oh the Steel cool great, great. this is awesome <laughs> Good um, first game back. Yeah, we ended up beating them. We had a it's actually a three game weekend against the Steel, mm -hmm. so that's kind of crazy, especially when you're playing the same team over and over and it's over. It's like again. the way their playoffs are too. Yeah. So um developmentally, the first thing I noticed about the current Muskegon Lumberjacks team is their communication on mm -hmm. ice. I felt that they all knew very well where each other was and they all communicated very well, which is something that I think the Lumberjacks have missed kind of in the past, maybe last year. Um, in particular. Yeah. So I was excited to see that for sure. There was a little bit last season. It's so hard because these seasons kind of like morph into each other. Yeah, it still feels like November of 2020. Never ending. I don't but know. But <laughs> it will end, guys. Don't worry. But it, I think you're right. The communication did seem to be a little remiss of it last season. So it's nice to see them be a little bit more communicative. And I thought, too, as a whole, like the juniors, it's really easy to have a standout player. Um, yeah. Just kind of like the one or two guys that really carry the team as far as points. The whole team seemed to be equally producing. Now, it's not to say they all have the same points, but they were giving equal effort, I thought. Yeah. Um, working really well together. There's a lot of guys that had come back. This is their second or third season with Muskegon, so they're yeah. kind of considered the veterans being, you know, 19, however veteran you can be. Yeah. But it was really nice to see just the camaraderie. And yeah. I think they played really well together. And of really course, well being under um, Mike Hamilton as their coach, he's a fantastic coach. He so he works to get the best out of his players, and I think that he is so far doing that. Mm -hmm. It was helpful that we saw them. 20 plus games in so they've worked out some of the kinks I yes. imagine they had when they we first started. We didn't have to suffer through the first few games. <laughs> when they first started. Um, not that we wouldn't have because right. we love it anyway but yeah. it was just great to see them play. It was great to be there. They even had some fans in the mm -hmm. audience. We got the you suck people going. Yep. So yep. that was super great as well. Um, the next thing so the Red Wings are playing. NHL is on. They've been playing. Um, mm -hmm. They're at this point of recording 2-5-2. Two, and two. So, so they, a little less than half bad. That's we could leave it there. That's <laughs> a little less than half bad That's better. A less. <laughs> it doesn't make yeah. sense. I feel like Bilbo when he's doing a speech. <laughs> but, um, but one of the things that was super great that had happened before game started, of course, was Larkin. Yes. Um, Dylan Larkin being named captain, which was not a surprise at all to me, considering he's been with the team. He's proven himself. He's a fantastic leader. Mm -hmm. He's a leader in points in production as well as mm -hmm. character and as well as just... He doesn't take it lightly. Well, just loving the right. team. Someone who respects the organization, respects the team, respects his position. I feel like that's just Dylan Larkin mm -hmm. through and through. I think he believes in the mission too. Yeah. Which is big. Yeah, and just believes in Detroit, which is a huge deal. Um, and I think that Stevie Y was 
good to mm-hmm. give, or I think it was good that he gave it to him mm-hmm. just because, well, not gave it, he earned it. He definitely Larkin earned, earned it. the captaincy. <laughs> he was awarded so, the captaincy. Very yeah. huge congratulations yeah. to Dylan Larkin, and that's super great. But let's talk about the taxi squad so far, Rach, about the Red Wings taxi squad. So the fun thing, in case you missed it in our last video, we briefly touched Sorry, on it. Sorry, we're, so we're going fast, guys. We're going really fast. <laughs> we'll take some time on the Griffins here, but... <laughs> The taxi squad is basically a grouping of players that each team is permitted to select that they can pull from in case of emergency, injury, sickness, you know, things like that. Sickness and in health. <laughs> That's <laughs> <US part. laughs> it's, a, it's a lifelong commitment. <laughs> so the taxi squad that the Wings have had previously, when we first mentioned it, they had already picked Rasmussen and Chalowski. They have recently added Tara Horosi, Giovanni Smith, and Calvin Pickard. Um, there's a ton of movement in the last two days as far as rosters. I and imagine guys that's over because the AHL is starting soon. Yeah, um, they got to make a lot of moves. And so we were at camp today and noticed that Pickard wasn't there. Well, obviously, he got selected to be part of the taxi squad. So what this means for Grand Rapids is they had holes to fill, which they did, and we'll get to that. But what's really cool and what I was really excited about was to see Giovanni Smith listed there. It's no secret that we're big fans of Smith, but mm-hmm. he has developed and matured so well. I yeah. think this is a good opportunity that, though you don't want a player to go down and have to have the taxi squad step in, right. um, it is it presents a good opportunity for him to really prove himself and really concrete his position within the organization. And being around the Red Wings guys, I think that right. is different than being around the Griffins guys. The Red Wings guys, it's, it's where you want to be. It's where you want to end up. So I think that it's cool for him and yeah. for all of these guys to be able to be around that and to grow in that. So mm-hmm. I really look forward to see how this helps him. So practicing with the Red Wings, and that does mean different coaching um, a little bit as well because they do have different staff yes. they have different coaching so to see kind of what those coaches can pull out of these guys is going to mm-hmm. be super great too and how he responds to that pressure and all the guys too but yeah Smitty is definitely one I'm, I'm super pumped to see how he handles yeah it. so then um, moving into that that clearly creates some holes so that's forwards defensemen um, goaltending yeah. that yeah defenseman goaltending I was like who's the defense <laughs> <Jelowski>. <laughs> obviously <laughs> anyways um <laughs> So today at camp was super exciting just because we finally were able to be at the Van Andel Arena so again, home of the Griffins. Um, and there were some standouts, some that have, uh, the ones that were standouts to me were guys that played on the Griffins last year mm-hmm. and even some on the Toledo Walleye. So Troy Loggins, um, Jared Lucas Savages, mm-hmm. and Gregor McLeod. Nice, Gregor McLeod. <laughs> See, she's here for me. She's got me. I gotcha. Those three, I think, are going to be super great. And I think we nicknamed them, like, just not the college line because they're not together. But kind just, of, yeah. But it's Just so, the unsung heroes yeah. that kind of come out when you're looking for guys to fill positions on teams. You know, you're not always going to have the ones that you drafted. You're not always going to have the guys that are moving mm-hmm. ECHL or whatever. These are the grinding kind of guys. And they grind. And they it's do. great. Yes. And I think all of them, just even in practice, they're hard workers. They're fast. Um, Greg McLeod is super fast. Yes. Um, they're all really accurate with their shot, which is super great as well. So those are the stickouts to me as far as mm-hmm. forwards go. And then um, we had some defensemen as well. But I do want to mention one that did pop out to me. And granted, today the practice was like an hour and a half, two hours long or something. But it was... We, got, we gleaned. We gleaned we so were much. And I just love to look at their stamina and how they, like, in the later parts they do suicides and how they hold up to that after a full well, hour and a half of practice. Well, considering and, who knows what they've been able to do yeah. over the quarantine... I think they all looked pretty good they for their first good camp together. Yeah. I think that that was There great. was a couple of the younger, the newer kids that looked like they were struggling a bit. But <laughs> um, one that stuck out to me as far as forward position goes is Max Heinz. Um, he was not drafted by us, but he was pulled in to kind of fill some slots that we've lost. He, I, I feel like he's a very agile, nimble player. He's on the, He has a smaller frame. He's not a big, bulky dude. But I really, I was impressed by his skating and his effort, too, because going yeah. head-to-head with some of the fastest players on our team, like Kyle Criscolo's back, and that kid, he just glides. Yes. Like, if you remember the 2017 Calder Cup championship, you remember Kyle Criscolo. Kyle Criscolo, number 51. He's got his number back oh, and everything. It's so great to see And he's back. net front. He's just, he's super quick. He's he was a, smaller, a rookie that year, He's too. a smaller guy, but he uses that to his advantage, mm-hmm. and it never slows him down, yeah. if that makes sense. So he never, it's kind of like Hicken's, mm-hmm. where he doesn't let his size determine anything. Right. He's going to elbow you out of the way <laughs> without a penalty. It's going to be clean. And get in there. But I think Heinz is kind of similar to that, and it was really cool to see him try fit in and measure up to the guys. But as far as defensemen goes, we have some really young guys coming in that we've been waiting for for quite some time. Jared yeah. McIsaac mm-hmm. uh, right now, and Donovan Sabrango was uh, signed for an amateur contract. And we actually just recently talked about him because he was just drafted. Yeah. So that is huge for him. This is a very big opportunity to yeah. kind of fill a slot. As far as McIsaac goes, he's listed as non-roster. Um, he had struggled with injuries and shoulder surgeries and things like he's that. He's been kind of so. injury prone, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I think they're trying to gauge to But see. yeah, in between when he's not off the roster on injury, he does really well. Yeah. So it's like, well, that's great. You know, if it's not going to hold you back, 
That's yeah. great. I mean, don't get injured. But <laughs> please don't. Super great. It doesn't hold you back. But this is a good chance for him to, and even watch him in practice a little bit. It's a good chance yeah. for him to not only get accustomed to how things are done in the AHL, but try get himself to the physical ability and health yes. that he needs to be to be a professional. And that's why all the, the young kids that are in there right now, it's really good that they're in the camp and that they're practicing with mm-hmm. Um, the veteran, as we would call them, Griffins, that have been with the team for a while. Joe Hicketts, um, Dylan McElrath, Don Turgeon, Dominic still Turgeon. The bomb. <laughs> he still skates like just a dream. It's, it really is. It's it, his acceleration right off is just so good. For his skating alone, I'm not sure why he's not NHL. Yeah. I'm just going to put it out it's there. It's probably the hair. <laughs> <laughs> that is another thing. They're all growing the hair out. But we'll move to leadership what is with change. That? <laughs> so um, Matt Ford was the captain last year of the Grand Rapids Griffins, and he's not on the roster. His number was with someone else. Mm-hmm. So we're thinking he's not coming back. We haven't heard anything officially. Um, but with that lack in leadership as far mm-hmm. as a captain being named, we're pretty sure it's going to go to Lashoff, Brian Lashoff. I, I, I can't imagine why it wouldn't. He's been there for, what, 12 seasons, 13 seasons? I can't imagine <laughs> why it wouldn't, considering he also wants to stay there. So. Yeah. It's not that he can't make NHL. It's that he wants, he's seen himself as a veteran role, mm-hmm. as a developer yeah. of players. And that's, he likes does that, that not role. say captain to you? I feel like it does. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's captain to you. Are but, you not entertained? And he's just, he's got the best personality for it, I he think, does. and just le- leads by leadership. Mm-hmm. I mean, leads it's, by leadership. He's, he's just good. The, the guy's yeah. got a cool head. He's brilliant with the game, too. Yeah. And he's got more patience than a saint, honestly. Yeah, so <laughs> we, we probably think that, well, we do think Brian Lashoff will be the captain. We mm-hmm. haven't heard. I'm pretty excited to see if that does happen. I'd love to see a C on his jersey. I if it I'm doesn't happen and there's someone else, we probably love that person, too. We love them all. We're just saying. <laughs> this is by default. <laughs> all right, so then there was some defensive restructuring mm-hmm. is what we've been seeing just because we did we don't have more cider right now um name gustav lindstrom i was gonna say gustav lindstrom so there's some guys who are still I'm pretty playing. much google for her <laughs> uh, okay google um <laughs> that's funny <laughs> i like that so basically <laughs> defensive they're, still, restructure. they're still playing in europe right now mm-hmm. and they won't be coming back for um the griffin's season basically mm-hmm. so um, talk about the restructuring. So we, Google. Yeah. <laughs> I will. My name isn't Google. <laughs> so the defensive restructuring was kind of a given. Um, a lot of teams have gone through great changes, especially with European players being overseas right now. A lot of our D, like she said, with Sider and Lindstrom, they're either with Detroit or they're finishing out their seasons in right. Europe. That being said, we got Charles Edouard Dastou. Nice. I think I said it right. He played a few games with us last season. He is going to be a full timer this season. I'm really excited to see what I he does. I liked what he did with us. I when was he pretty was with impressed with this. Year. Yeah, and he, he seemed to just be able to jump right in there and mm-hmm. get right in with it, the team and keep it's up the pressure. It's that natural hockey sense. You yeah. can't teach people. You can't. And then we got Tori Dello, which we also Another had thing. last season. I believe he was a college kid. Notre Dame. <laughs> I got the jersey. I'm just not wearing it. But <laughs> both of them, I think it's going to be a big season for them to really solidify themselves. But I think more for Dustu because I think he's been more on a trajectory of development for the NHL, whereas Dello, because it's the college route, it's a little bit different to chip your way to the top. But it's not an impossibility. So I think with those two, it adds a little bit more creativity and flair to both of them are pretty flashy with the puck, I think. They're very sharp skaters, but I really enjoyed watching their stick handling today, especially. And their shots look accurate yeah. to me. Um, so long as they, because, of course, playing college, playing AHL, it's going to be different. Right. So I'm curious to see how they can tune their game to that mm-hmm. kind of a beat. So I'm excited uh, yeah. to see what they're about to do. That's very exciting. And last exciting. But, exciting. Uh, just, we're just excited. Last <laughs> but certainly not least, goaltending. There's mm-hmm. been some changes. Do yes. you want this one or do you want Sure, I can start. So goaltending, we figured Pickard would be in the mix. He's not yet. Um, like we said, he's on the taxi squad. So right now we've got uh, Pat Nagel will probably be start, and Caden Fulcher will be mm-hmm. probably back up. So they were both at camp um, when we went for the Griffins. So that was surprising to me because there's pretty much both of the starts for Toledo. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm like, huh, what are they going to do? But, hey, go Griffins. <laughs> <laughs> we good. They'll be fine. Toledo's great. Mm-hmm. Um Watson, the coach, is super great, too. So yes. that'll be wonderful. Anyways, we love hockey. This is, <laughs> this is just the best. Um, so Pat Nagel, have all the confidence in the world in him. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's a great person and great goaltender. So he did very well with us last year um, with, like, when he had to fill in for all the injuries that mm-hmm. we were having, all the call-ups, all the... Yeah. Last year was... Him and Pickard floated around quite yeah, a Yeah, we forget, but last year was kind of um, a year for that. Like, we didn't start hitting our stride as a team until right before everything stopped. So... <laughs> we could have done very well in the playoffs. We, yeah, we would... I think we would have, yeah. but... Um, 
long story short, we've got Pat Nagel and we've got Caden Fulcher, mm-hmm. which why don't you talk a little bit about Fulcher? What I find interesting was Fulcher, he has, we've been watching him for several seasons now, um, and actually I'll link the interview we had with him when he started in Toledo, his, fre- his freshman, his rookie <laughs> year. He is a young kid, so it's hard to separate it, but he has got one of the best dispositions. Like, if yes. you're going to be a goalie, you should have his disposition, honestly. Yeah. He's smiling. And Nagel, too. Yeah, you, you can't take things personally too much but I think he has a lot of confidence and I've been really excited to watch him grow as far as athleticism goes he seems more confident and more able to handle himself in the big leagues which this season will be a a, a proving ground for that but what I found I'm sure they'll tandem oh I'm sure sure that's how it'll go yeah with Nagel yeah it's good though to keep both engaged Mm -hmm. in the game and I think that that's something that the Griffins always try to do is keep both their goalies on a path of success whenever they need to be called on yes exactly they got to be prepared but what I know we we've talked about Larson and kind of the rough year he had he is finishing out his season overseas he has not been recalled Uh, Keith Petruzzelli will probably be the next one in line Victor Bratstrom will probably come in 2021 um, over from Sweden. So there's going to be a lot of changes in this next season. So these guys, if, especially for Fulcher, this is a really good opportunity for him because yes, the spotlight is. is on him. Mm-hmm. This is He doesn't have a ton of competition that's ready now or even local that the Red Wings are really looking at. So it's going to be a big deal for him. And but he, I think looked, he's, sharp. he yeah. looked sharp at camp. Um, mm-hmm. So I was really happy with he that. He was laughing every time I looked at yeah, him. Yeah, he was going through drills. He always is. And that's one thing. Yeah. I, I don't think you can go wrong with a goaltender who is willing to work out his kinks as well as mm-hmm. just have a good disposition about it. Mm-hmm. And him and Nagel have worked together for so long now both with Toledo and now the Griffins and during camps and training camps yep. that they both know each other well enough to right. egg each other on and they're both competitive with one another mm-hmm. so I feel like it's a great mix of the two um, so that's going to be really exciting. I'm excited for this season. It's, it's, it's They're starting on the road. We won't see them at home till February 20. And Yeah, so you know, they do have quite a few away games. Um, we don't yet know the protocol for um, actual game days. is set to be releasing it later this week. But we'll keep you guys updated, of course. of course. But that is all we have for today. We Thank you. you so much for watching if you watched this far. <laughs> Sorry for all the fast talking. We kind of get really they fast. This far. They missed us. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you so much again for watching. Watch our, um, we'll link as many interviews as we have with the guys that we talked mm-hmm. about um, below. Interviews are going to be a little different this year, of course. So we'll do our best. We're going to be keeping our website updated. Of mm-hmm. course, I'm getting a lot of pictures. So just keep keep on keeping on. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. Ooh. And have a great rest of your day or whenever you want. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>